Thankfully, the Holy Ghost had already planted a seed in my mind that I was literally a genius, even though I was failing everything. If you have kids watching, please, I'm giving you this warning because she's a very vulgar woman. You've heard me ask this before, and I'll keep asking this, that if a person says they're a prophet, why do you believe they are a prophet? Is it only because they say they are? What makes you believe they're a prophet? Now, when it comes to this person, Tiffany Montgomery, who I have so many issues with, she simply is not a prophet. She's not even a good representation of a godly woman. We're going to see that in a little bit. This woman is not only ignorant of the scriptures, not only is she distorting the scriptures, but she's also vulgar. That's a huge problem as well. And so I want to go ahead and jump into it. And I didn't know this. I had covered a couple of times some things that she had said before. Like, wow, why, why would you say that there's no need for you to say that? I didn't. I'm thinking that maybe it's a one off or, you know, every now and then. But this is I guess this is her thing. And I was sent. I was watching someone else's channel. Just I was doing some work and I saw this and it just it just blew my mind. And so I went back and, and watched her her video on this. And so I want to go ahead and jump into this. This just goes to prove what sort of person she is and why you should not listen to her or follow her. Because again, there's a danger in following a false prophet. If you think she's a prophet, then fine. Tell us why she is. They gave me Ritalin, which they tried to change and call it smart pills, but I had already thought I was a genius. Thankfully, the Holy Ghost had already planted a seed in my mind that I was literally a genius, even though I was failing everything. Who says that they're a genius? Who goes around and says they're a genius? Now, we're going to find out that that's not really the case. They gave me smart pills and I wouldn't take them because I was like, I'm smart by myself. I don't need your stupid pills. So we're going to be insisting in childbirth, but these are, you know, there are those, y'all know them doulas. They are witches. She says doulas are witches. And I think she, she's impugning all doulas, I guess. Does, does she know a doula is someone who is basically kind of like a midwife, someone who's assisting in pregnancy. As a matter of fact, uh, my daughter actually used used them before, and they have Christian dudes. They have some that are not Christian. They have different types of dudes. These are just people that just assist. They're not they're not trained or licensed uh, in uh, obstetrics. I think it's what it's called. Uh, they're not an OBGYN, but they work alongside. As a matter of fact, they kind of encourage and so forth. But she says they're witches. Why do you think they decided to come a doula? Because the baby has entered through a gate. That baby just entered in through a gate. And that doula was there to open up the gate of that and, 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 and implant something ritualistic wise that bound your baby up for the rest of his life. Bound your baby up for the rest of her life and you didn't know it. This just this is silly. It, it, it makes no sense for her to say that. I don't know what she's trying to get across. I don't know. But it's, it's not only a stupid statement, it's a false statement. Now, I want to jump in where I saw this on, on K-Dub True's channel. And I'm sitting there doing some work and I saw this and I'm like, wow, this, this is amazing. This is where you see, one, her arrogance. You clearly are going to see her ignorance and her vulgarity coming out. Now, these are things that you would probably have seen or heard or associated with a woman. Uh, I'm sorry, with a man you know, in the past. Now, obviously women today have, have mouths just like men and then they can, they can kind of get low and in the gutter too. But a woman of God, a, a, a purported woman of God, someone who professes to be a woman of God, you wouldn't think this would come out of their mouth. And so I'm going to reiterate what Chris is saying here. If you've got children, uh, sensitive ears, you might not want to listen to this, but I, and I'm not going to bleep it out because I want you to hear it coming from her mouth. I want to just show the level of language she uses. Again, if you have kids watching, please, I'm giving you this warning because she's a very vulgar woman. She's very mean spirited. She's she's mean. She's vulgar. But I just want to hear just how she talks. And again, if she talks like this in public, you just know it's worse. Right now, what he's talking about as far as the mean part is, I guess apparently there's some sort of beef between her and another false prophet, the celestial uh, lady and another one. And she's always pronouncing curses and death on people, the yelling and so forth. It's like she's, she's just really unhinged and, and triggered about anything, especially if they come to her. You go back and watch the video. Matter of fact, I'll leave a link into, into K-Dub's video. Just listen to what, what, how she's saying, what she's saying. First of all, she's constantly using 
the words in the Bible incorrectly. But again, you be wary, be warned. Uh, you're going to hear some words uh, that should not ever come out of a person who's purporting to be a person of God. You should never hear these words coming out of their mouth. Behind the behind, you know, in private. Uh, I'm going to play a couple clips just to watch. So when he says, I'm going to go before you and I'm going to make this crooked place straight, that means whoever thought that they could cock block what God was doing. Why are you saying that word? Now, that just means you, you are in the way you're blocking, you're stopping, you're holding up, you're interfering. You could have said that. You didn't have, when, when these words come out of your mouth, one of two reasons uh, are there. One, you don't have the vocabulary to use anything else. You didn't think about it. Or two, and more importantly, which also goes along with one, it's just it's in your heart. What's in you comes out. The, the, that's the word that comes out. I've heard the word before and, and before I was saved, I would have used it before, but I have, I, I don't have any occasion to use it now. As a matter of fact, you would have, I would have to intentionally and force myself to say that it doesn't, it doesn't come out because it's not in my heart, but clearly this prophetess that she says, she, she calls herself that this is in her and it comes out. Why? Whoever thought they could pick up the phone and say, don't support her. Again, if you have children, you have been warned. He said, I'm going to. Now, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. As a matter of fact, before we go to the it gets worse, let me just play this clip also where she said it before. And I've covered this in a past video. There's just no need for her to say that. And then we'll go back to uh, this particular video. I've had uh, one person that was working closely with me at Cover by God. And every time I turned around, this guy was giving a woman a ride home. And I was like, well, he putting, he gonna, he's going to be putting his, his in her soon, God. Are you? And I'm going to make the crooked places straight. I will break the pieces of the gates of brass. I thought the word gate here was powerful. It means crocodile jaws. No, it doesn't. This is where her ignorance shows up. Now, she all often brings up words, and I, I can't recall... If she's if I've heard her say 10 different words, she's brought up where she looked at the word, maybe one or two were correct. She often gets them wrong. It, no gate does not mean <laughs> crocodile. But matter of fact, let's go to the passage. The passage is in she's speaking right now of Isaiah 45, too. So it's put on the screen. Isaiah 45, two says, I will go before you and make the rough place smooth. I will shatter the doors of the bronze and cut through their iron bars. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden wealth of secret places. Now, what you didn't see there in the NASB was the word gate. But if you go to the King James Version, you'll see the word gate. It says, I will go before the matter of fact, let's go to, to verse one. Let's go to verse one. Also in Isaiah, you'll see the word gates there. Um, and you so you also see it in verse one in there as well. But then in verse two is where, we, where she's speaking. I will go before the and I will make crooked the place straight and I will break the pieces of the gates of brass. So the word that's used there for the word gates, it's not actually the word gate. It's the word uh, for the left, which is mean it means a door opening. And so but that's fine. But if you look at the word gate and so she uses the word shaar for the word gate, which, by the way, if you look up the word gate, let's do I have this actually put in. Yeah, the word shaar, the word gate in Hebrew. If you look on the screen, this word gate is from the Hebrew word shaar, wherever you see it. Uh, well, I, sh I shouldn't say wherever you see the word translated in English uh, it will be Sha'ar, but the word Sha'ar, the word gate uh, in Hebrew is Sha'ar. And so she says, she says that it is crocodile, crocodile jaws. No, that that's not the case. As a matter of fact, let's go over here to, to Logos. So let's put it on the screen. And so you see here the word that's used here is the word Sha'ar for gate. And what does it mean? Let's see if I can pull it up. The word sha'ar, it means, if you look at the word down, if you, now if you look at the bottom, it means uh, an estimate. It can be used in that way. Uh, the gate or opening of a city. Uh, it can even be used to, to burst open. And so this word sha'ar, let's look at the different times that, that it's used. Matter of fact, let's look at the, the root. It's just an opening, a location, a place. And so what she's done is she's made more out of it than ever. As a matter of fact, when she's speaking about this word crocodile, she's looking at the word natin, uh, I'm sorry, tanin, which is the word which some think that the word for serpent is the word for or used to, to, to signify the word that we have in English for crocodile. That's not the word for gate. Now, I don't know where she gets this from. 
Uh, she is without question confused. And so if you're wondering, huh, I didn't know gate meant that. Well, because it doesn't. But this is just her not knowing, bringing this up. It means an easily accessible woman. That is the Hebrew definition of the word gate. By the way, it doesn't mean that either. Crocodile jaws, an easily accessible woman, which means you men who are sleeping with these women who are trying to figure out why your destiny is destroyed, is destroyed. Now, here it is. You're being warned again, just like A-Dub said. Uh, what she said earlier, uh, it gets worse here. And again, she should never say this. No one who is a believer should say this, especially in the public before the people. Who is trying to figure out why you're 40 and your life hasn't gotten anywhere? Who is trying to figure out why you think you you thought you could cheat on your wife and you think that you up and up and stuck, but you really down and bound for all of y'all men who think you can put your dick in somebody and it just rock like that? I why? 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 Why do you have to say that? You don't. It's in her. That's why. Now, I don't know what's going on in her life. I have no idea what's happening with her. You know, people talk about this supposed husband that she has that that she won't uh, let the world see. I have no idea what's going on. Is that weird? That's weird. It's it's just it makes no sense. But fine, I'll leave that alone. But this right here, we touch this. This was wrong. This was without question. It was sinful. How do we know? Because Paul tells us there must be no filthiness or silly talk or coarse gesturing, uh, which are not fitting, uh, but rather for giving thanks. We're also told that we should let our speech always be with grace as though seasoned with salt. How we say things, what we say and how we say things absolutely matters. And so the vulgarity in this woman, the raunchiness, that's just wrong. That's, that is just wrong. Now, you've got a bunch of foolish people that are following her and they're clapping. They don't know better. Maybe maybe they're stunned. Maybe they said, well, heck, she's a prophet, so she can say what she wants to say. No, wrong. To know that you just entered into a gate. Now, you didn't enter in a gate, but that's her whole point. So she's got folks riled up. Now, she's going to also show her ignorance here when she starts talking about being a, uh, a prophet or being before the people teaching or preaching. Still get emails from people saying to me, women shouldn't preach. I'm like, first of all, are we in 1453? Because if you had the balls and you actually did the job up here, maybe I wouldn't have to. Again, if you have the, the I'll just say it, if you have the balls, why, why? Why? First of all, whatever a man is or isn't doing doesn't mean that you go and take the place. What you're really doing is you are spiritually doing what the world is doing um, in, in social society, in social societies as it relates to men, how women are replacing men and vice versa. So all you're doing is the same thing, but you're doing it in the church. I can sit down there with my legs crossed, looking pretty. So unless you read the Bible with the help of the Holy Ghost, you always gonna get it wrong. What he was talking about is back in that day, just to clarify something for y'all. The women sat over here. And the men sat over here. And when they didn't understand what was being said, they would scream over to their husbands. And they would say, what did the pastor say? Is that what the Bible says? No, it's not what the Bible says. As a matter of fact, we're going to look and see what Paul says. And Paul didn't give those reasons, the rationale that she says. And you're going to hear people that are going to want to say that, well, that was the culture. That was the custom. The women were being out of order. They were yelling. They were being disruptive. Well, wait a minute. As we read the Bible, who are the people, which gender is being the most disruptive? Which one is the is being the most out of order? Women or men? Well, it's the men. And what Paul did not say, what we don't see anywhere else is someone addressing them and telling them to be silent the same way the women. It's just the women that are being told to be silent. Why? It's because they are wanting to do something that they're not supposed to do. Remember, Paul says in uh, 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, he says, but I did not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over man. You can't teach over a man or exercise authority over a man. Now, can a woman share the gospel? Sure. Can a woman, uh, especially someone who's not a believer, show them the error of their ways, someone who's trying to understand? Sure, they can do that. As a matter of fact, that's really what we see with Priscilla and, Aqu and Aquila. And even in that, she's going to use that example. I'll come back to that in just a second. But 
sticking here. When Paul says, "For uh, but they are to remain quiet, look what he says. He didn't say because they were doing all this yelling or that was the culture or that was what it was in Corinth or that was what it was said in Ephesus. Now notice this letter uh, is to Timothy. It's not written to a particular church, a particular locale. So this is going to be a universal command. And he says, I wish we would be to be silent. And notice what he says, what he appeals to, not for anything that she's saying, but his appealing to is that it, verse 14, he, he appeals to 13. He appeals to the Old Testament to creation for it was Adam who was created first. And then Eve. that was Paul's reason, Paul's rationale. And then in 1 Corinthians 14, when you have all of this uproar as it relates to spiritual gifts and so forth, and the entire church was out of order, all of them were behaving out of order. He says the women are to keep silent churches for they are not permitted to speak, but are to subject themselves as the law always says. So they are to subject themselves. If they want to learn, um, then fine. You ask your husband or your father if you don't have one. But the point is, you're appealing to something that scripture doesn't say. So, yeah, you're going to have to back that up with scriptures and you simply cannot. So he told them to be quiet. Amen. Well, how do I know this? I know this because the Holy Ghost. But I also know it because one of Paul's teachers was, who was it? Aquila and Priscilla. It was a husband and wife team. And if you ever read the Bible, you'll notice a lot of the time they put the wife name before they put the husband's name. Which means that she had more of a prominent teaching position in his life than her husband did. That's absolutely not what that means. And there is no necessarily reason why that's, why that's done. Um, no one knows. There is one time where his name is mentioned before, and I think the other four times hers mentioned prior to that. Doesn't mean anything though. There is no biblical basis or even a cultural basis for for doing so. So she's just supplanting or supposing. By the way, we don't know who did most of the teaching. We have no idea whatsoever. And so the scripture doesn't say so. You don't say again. Don't exceed from what the text says, as Paul also warns in First Corinthians four six. Do not exceed from what is written. It You'll also notice that the same man that said women shouldn't talk in the church was also the same man in the Bible that had a list of women that he thunk in ministry for being ministers of the gospel. You should look at it. Those names will, you'll be like, I didn't even know these people was in here. What she's referring to probably is Romans 16, and you see a few women's names mentioned. Doesn't mean that they were leaders in the church. As a matter of fact, they were not leaders in the church. As a matter of fact, Paul is introducing them to, hey, these people are serving in the body. For example, in 1 Corinthians, I mean, Romans 16, I commend you, Phoebe, a sister. People think, well, she was a deacon. She, well, no, because we're already told what the qualifications of a deacon are. Have to be a male. So she could not be in a role or position of a deacon. But could she be a servant in that, in a general sense? Sure. All of the people in the body were called to be service and Paul is just commending her. And so what was she doing? She's probably just bringing information to the body. If we drop down to verse seven, I'm sorry, verse three, uh, greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ, who for my life's sake risk their own necks to whom I not only do I give thanks, but also the church of the Gentiles. And so they just mentioning, giving them um, uh, accommodations, but the church doesn't know about them. These are just people who are just helpful. Neither of these, the husband or the wife, are people who had a particular um, role or office in the church. Uh, greet uh, Apennitus, my beloved, who was the first convert to Christ. Just again, just people. This is a male, by the way. Uh, didn't, he didn't have a particular position. Uh, greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Amen. She didn't have a position. Uh, greet Andronicus and Junius, my kinsmen, my fellow prisoners. And people point to Junius. Well, that's an apostle. We don't have no idea. First of all, Junius is not an apostle. <laughs> Junius nor Andronicus. How do we know? Well, a couple of reasons. One, as we read it, it says they were outstanding amongst the apostles and toys apostles, which is uh, apostle ways, which is they were uh, doing seeding things or working well or known, commended amongst the apostles. They were not apostles. I didn't even call it amongst the other apostles. They were amongst the apostles. And if they were, there'd be no need for them to be introduced to the church in, in Rome. 
greet Am- Amplatus, uh, my, my beloved, greet Urbanus. And so these are people who are just workers in the body. That's it. They're not, they don't have a particular role. We don't know what they were doing. Maybe they were just serving. Maybe they were just handing out um, food. We have no idea. So to make this statement, it's a far-fetched statement. But I understand it. People want to do in the church what society is doing also that is replacing men or the feminizing of men same thing happening spiritually or the feminizing of male males roles it makes no sense for for paul with the bible to give these qualifications and then you turn around and ignore the qualifications so i find that kind of funny i find it funny that the very same um, book that you might even say is for that particular culture. You don't have a problem speaking in tongues where that very same book is speaking about as though that book is approving your version of tongues, which by the way, it's not. But the point is, this woman should be avoided for so many reasons, her arrogance, her ignorance, and her vulgarity. And again, if you say she's a prophet, please, someone tell me, tell the rest of the body, why is she a prophet? Is it just because she said so? 